Hello, this is John Felt. Welcome to the Weekly Water Outlook on April 7th, 2013. Well, it was sort of an interesting week last week for a couple reasons. Um, for some areas, uh, but overall it was pretty quiet. Um, this is the rainfall and snow over the last week. Snow over the northern part of the U.S. and rain over the southern part. It looks like the areas of most active precipitation included the Pacific Northwest and parts of the southern U.S. I'm going to mention in a minute here, uh, last week I was expecting this heavier rain to move off to the east, and there was uh, some heavier rain over the southeast U.S., but it was less than was forecast last week, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now here's the percent of normal precipitation. Right away, just taking a look at this, it stands out that large parts of the area were well below normal. That's the areas in red. Now, I also mentioned for Texas and Oklahoma that it'd be a week of some welcome rainfall. And if you look at Oklahoma and Texas, you see those spots of uh, purple, and that's as much as six times normal rainfall, and blue is two times normal rainfall. So it was definitely a welcome rain over most of the area of the Deep South. There's also a bit of snow. Snow season's tapering down, but we did get a bit of snow here and there. Generally light amounts, the maroon or the light amounts an inch or two. Uh, Great Lakes region received quite a bit more in the areas of green, which is four to six inches, as well as higher elevations of the Appalachians and parts of the northeast U.S. Now the water equivalent of the snow has not changed a whole lot. It's starting to erode a bit on the southern edge, but there's still a pocket of fairly heavy water equivalent. That's that maroon area, about four inches or so, over a small part of North Dakota and northern Minnesota. Like I've been mentioning for the last number of weeks or even a month, uh, the area is very small as far as the confinement of these higher water equivalents. So there very well could be some significant flooding, but I think it's going to be confined to a very small reach of several uh, rivers in those areas. So here's the amount of snow on the ground. Uh, I guess focus on the red line here. Um, looking back over the uh, winter months so far, uh, you can sort of see it's tracked along this uh, line in March. It's sort of held the same. Um, this is the forecast from the model, and you know, keep an eye on this here. Um, it's forecasting an increase of snow cover here, um, up to about 30% uh, here um, from the current under 20%. So um, I'll be explaining that in just a bit here, but it's interesting to see that late in the season here in spring, there is an increase on a national scale. Now, Blue Water Outlook really focuses on soil moisture because that impacts um, all sorts of um, water resource issues from reservoir levels to stream flow to agriculture. And this is sort of an um, update on soil moisture anomalies. Red are the dry areas and green are the wet areas. And this shows that very strong dividing line that we've had. Uh, this set up last fall and it's still in here uh, where western areas are very dry and to the east it's um, at least normal if not even a bit wet. But if you look at this you can really see parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, western Iowa, Kansas, um, and then down through Oklahoma and Texas even though they did get some rain this last week. That's the area we really do need some recharging rains over the next couple weeks. Now rivers um, also are worth looking at at this time. The areas in brown and maroon are the low stream flows, and this is a seven-day average stream flow graphic. Areas in green are near normal, and smaller areas in blue are above normal. Now this is sort of interesting because we're in the time of year where typically you'd have a lot of rivers running above normal, or normal or above normal, because we get our flooding. And right now we're actually seeing rivers um, pretty normal over most of the nation, except in that middle part that's been very dry, and in those areas, stream flow is below normal. Now, last week I mentioned that we were going to transition from that negative phase Arctic Oscillation back up towards a positive phase, and it's taken a bit longer than I anticipated, but models are still showing that it is forecast to move up into neutral or positive territory as we get into the middle part of April. Uh, you can see this is where it dipped in, uh, to very low readings in late March. Started to work its way out, took a se secondary dip, and now it looks like it's going to move back up towards neutral conditions. 
Now, last week, this is, I want to take a moment to sort of explain what happened last week. This was last week. This is a graphic I took from last week's briefing. Last week, I mentioned that when you go to this positive Arctic Oscillation, you can get a split flow, and I expected the southerly branch to be more active. Well, if you remember the image I just showed, I'll show it to you here. We had this secondary dip, and it still has not really got back up into the positive rings. There was a delay. So instead of getting a split flow, we got more of a west to east flow, and it really never developed that much energy over the southern branch. That is why the precipitation over the southeast U.S. was not as high as, as expected in this dashed uh, area here. Uh, definitely over the middle part here, uh, heavier rain, but it just never really worked off to the east. This is the big picture for this week, and it's still based on a transition to that positive Arctic Oscillation. Uh, early in the week, the blue is a jet stream. We have a system that's going to be developing in the western U.S. and moving off to the east. The shaded area of yellow is the area of energy, the upper atmospheric energy, right in this area right here. And it looks like it's going to break apart into two tracks. This will be one of the tracks, and this will be the other track, so sort of a northeast track and a west-east track. Those will be where the precipitation is enhanced as that energy breaks off. Now, it looks like of those two, the northerly sort of the branch or the northerly pulse of energy will be the stronger and that's where the heavier rain. I think there's still some question on that southerly branch. It very well might do what it did last week where it brings some rain over eastern Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, and then begins to fall apart as it moves further east. Then late in the week you can see the yellow line, that is the uh, late in the week jet stream. That's that real typical positive Arctic oscillation pattern with a zonal west to east flow that can be relatively quiet and mild over parts of the nation. Now, I did want to mention as we get into spring, uh, we start to look at more mesoscale type patterns. These are the smaller scale patterns. I mentioned that in my newsletter. Uh, so you'll see my briefings taking on a bit of a different tone, getting away from some of the big scale patterns into maybe some of the smaller. Uh, this is a close-up of Texas um, and Oklahoma. And I wanted to just show that we're beginning to get higher levels of moisture working up from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this was as of um, the beginning of this week's period. Uh, southerly flow from the Gulf bringing up some arrows, areas of high levels of moisture. And that's going to what will be feeding the stronger storms as we get into the severe weather season. So here's the forecast uh, for rainfall over the next week. You can very clearly see the outline of the two pulses of heaviest rain, uh, each one associated with those pulses of energy. Here's the first one. The northerly one that I said it looks most likely stronger. Second one sort of picks up here over Oklahoma and Texas. Remember, it was real dry back here. Moves off to the east. But again, it looks like it's going to diminish further off to the east here. And not much rain at all over eastern parts of the Carolinas or eastern Georgia as well as Florida. Now, you remember that model I showed you of the snow? Well, look at that white line. North of there, it is going to be in the form of snow. So we'll expand the snowpack across the nation next week, maybe by another 10 or 15 percent. Now, looking out a little bit further as we get into the latter part of April, I wanted to point out some of the climate models. Week one is the top graphic. It shows that the Midwest um, generally will be the area that will be wet with the, the rain. I think that's going to benefit agriculture in most of those areas. Then we get into week two, and um, it'll be interesting this, how this week two uh, turns out. I think this is that zonal flow uh, type pattern, and it shows that the upper Midwest is wet, and a broad part of the southern part of the nation is dry. And I just wanted to point that out, that that's a fairly strong dry signal uh, over the southern Great Plains, into the southeast U.S., and then that could be beneficial rains over the northern tier of the U.S., perhaps even the Dakotas that really need that rain over into Minnesota, which does have um, that snowpack um, over it. Consequently, over the next two weeks, these are the changes in soil moisture. It does look like the upper Midwest will be the area that will be seeing positive soil moisture or improvements all the way up into the Ohio Valley, and then the southern U.S. generally dry. Now, this is probably indicative of the first week's rain, but generally speaking, I think the trend we're looking at with that uh, flow is um, over the northern area, a bit wetter, over the southern region, a bit drier. 
So the takeaway points from this week's briefing, two areas of activity. Midwest will be the most active area with some welcome snow over the northern reaches, rain over the south with a developing positive Arctic oscillation, a zonal flow pattern will develop. And it does look like the trend could be shifting north for the heavier precipitation and the south could be quieting down as we get into the latter part of April. Once again, thanks for listening to this week's briefing. I will be updating this again next Sunday.